welcome everybody. It is um, really a privilege to have you here. It's our first AMA. And um, yeah, so bear with us, have a little grace, but we are going to try our best to tell you about what salsa signals is about and, and maybe how you can benefit from it. And, and thank you so much for giving us your time to be here. Um, just our agenda quickly. Um, Charles and I are the leading TAs for Salsa Signal and we will do the presentation here today. Um, we are not the only TAs. I just want to say that we have a whole group of trainers. We have a little chat group for our trainers and they assist us there with um, calling coins that run and giving us setups for, for good trades and so on. So it's, um, thank goodness, not only our own ideas and trading setups. We are quite a few um, trainers looking at, at the charts and, and searching for, for very good opportunities. Um, what we will be looking at is just where to find um, salsa signals. We, we, we are just part of a community. We, we don't operate on our own. For, for those that are maybe here for the first time and haven't yet heard of Bitcoin Trend and Forecast, that's our mother company. And uh, we are just one of the products of Bitcoin Trend and Forecast. And um, so we will show you where you can find us and how to subscribe if you are interested at the end of the call. Um, we will also show you what, what you will receive if you decide to, to become part of our community. We will show you our previous results. This is our second month in the run. We launched last month on the 3rd of February. So we only have one month of history to, to show you. Um, we're going to ask the existing members if there are any, any of you that maybe had a positive experience or are happy with the product, just to give us a short little testimony of your experience and how you have benefited. So maybe think about it. We will really um, appreciate your contribution here. Um, and then Charles will take over from me and he will show you how we search for signals, how we... Um, technically analyze the chart and, and set, um, map this trade for you in terms of entry, take profits and stop losses. And, and then there will be an opportunity for general questions and answers to all the participants. So, so when we are there, you can just raise your hand. And like I said, John will help us manage the chat room and the raised hands and everything. Okay, so let's dive right into it. Um, so so where, where will you find us? Um, I'm going to show you quickly on the Bitcoin trend and forecast. It's b um, bitcointaf.com. There's the web address right there at the top, bitcointaf.com. So um, the quickest way to join the Signal Group is to first join the, the Bitcoin TAF community. But if you don't want to join immediately and maybe just want to check out the product, you will, before you give us your email address or any details, you can click there right there on products. You will be navigated to a site showing you all the Bitcoin, uh, the, the TAF products, which includes the day trade signals. That, that's if you wish to trade over a week or so. If you are more into uh, lower profits on a daily basis, then we are your go-to place and we are right there. Salsa signals, and you will click on view if you want to learn more about us. And then there's a short little introductory video and um, a description of what we are all about. And right here, we have a lot of frequently asked questions. Um, on so, so if you wonder about anything, 10 to 1, your question is already listed there. And you can just click on any, say, um, for that one, do you supply? signals for Binance as well as Qcoin, and then the reply will be there and so on. So that's just quickly where to find us. If you decide you, you want to join us, then you can click join us and um, then you will go to the store and select our product and pay for it. It is $50 for one month. And if you subscribe for three months, you get $10 discount. Um, just to get back to the presentation quickly. So that's all about our website. 
And like I say, once you have joined, you will be able to access the store, go to products and subscriptions, and you will click on Salsa Signals and select your product right there. Okay, once you have selected um, and paid, you will be navigated to the Bitcoin tab bot, and there you will click forward slash start and will receive this little message, and you will start following the prompts. Um, on the Telegram group, and and then this bot will help you to join the Salsa Signals Telegram channel, and you will also receive an email that's something like this. It says, hello, so-and-so. Um, just, sorry. Okay, you will receive an email um, once you have joined the group to um, just to tell you how, what, some trading tips and you can, if you, if you click on that link, you will be taken to this bot and, and oh, it will guide you through the whole process. It's very, very user-friendly. Um, let's just see. So when you land on our signals channel, this is what it will look like. Um, the, the telegram signal for salsa signals and um, in the telegram group you will receive signals looking like this so uh, like i said our results for the first three months that was 3 to 28 february all in all we put out 53 trades and as you know bitcoin wasn't very kind towards us during february we had a few hiccups um but despite that we managed to end up with a total profit for the what is it 25 days of 165.59%, that's accumulative. The average profit for the 53 trades was 3.38%. And I just want to explain to you, it, it our target is 3.5. That's what we will, would like to reach. And that, that's um, our goal per month. The reason why it's not 10 or maybe you, 15 or so, it's because our signals are calculated to play out over a period of two to 48 hours. So for, for a technical analyst to predict that a trade will make 10% or 15% profit in a matter of 24 or 48 hours is just irresponsible. So, so we try to, to, to be rather conservative and predict um, profits of eight to 10% at our TP two or three, rather than um, being unrealistic about it and oversell. We will rather see you making more profit than we predict than um, losing out on, on profit. So, so because it's a short term, the, obviously the profit ratio is a bit lower. If you are somebody that like to stick to a trade for eight days or 10 days, and you want to make 15 to 20% profit on that trade, then day trade masters is more your go-to place. We are more for your two, one to two day people. Um, right. So, so, so that's our um, results for February. As I say, take profit one, 12 trades, 10 trades closed on take profit two, seven closed on three and two on four. We hit 18 stop losses and four trades were recalled or canceled. That happens if the market turns on us or if it doesn't hit entry. Before it hits entry, um, it drops. And then obviously the trade is not valid anymore. So they were four of those. Um, yeah, so, so, so like I said, despite Bitcoin being a bit friendly to us, we, we have a 60-40 ratio approximately. And, and because your stop loss is like 3%, but your, but your profit is maybe like 7% or oh. 6%, we, we end up with an average of 3.38 and still make a profit. Um, I don't know, maybe if, if the, at this point there is anybody in, in, in the audience that, that would like, just to, so that it's not just us telling you we've got a fantastic pro product and um, there's lots of value for you it they, um uh, and so, uh, yes, sorry. Yourself, please. Yeah, so we have a few unmuted microphones. If, ladies and gents, if you wouldn't mind, uh, without us calling you out, just to unmute that. But, uh, Omri, there is a hand from our leads. 
Welcome, Marie. Welcome, Marie. We would love to hear from you, please. Hi, guys. Hi, Al Marie. Yes, mm. I would just like to say from my side, um, firstly, I want to thank you guys for the effort you put in and just from someone that has a really busy lifestyle and trying to trade on the side and having to put money on the table weekly and monthly. Um, I have found your signals brilliant. I mean, you've just said it there, 165% in February um, in a down market. Um, is, is brilliant. You, you guys helped me to make consistent profits weekly. That's also what I love about the Salsa signals is that it's short term. It's not a day trading and it takes a bit of stress off me to, to scalp the whole time. I'm a scalper, so it lessens my stress so much being able to do your Salsa signals in between and even in a down market, you know, sometimes, especially in a down market, sometimes you doubt yourself a lot. And then you guys with your signals, it's so comforting to know that I can still make consistent gains. Doesn't matter what the market looks like. And um, you guys are spot on with your stuff. And not even to say that the fact that you, you say where to, to get in, put your stop loss. I mean, you guys really cannot make it any easier for us. You know, I literally don't have to do any um, analysis. I can literally just go draw up my chart where to get in. I set my alarm for when it hits that, um, the, the jumping point, if I can call it that, and set my stop loss and, and off I go. So yes, um, it's, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And like I said, I've been making consistent gains with your signals. Oh, Marlies, that is such, such good feedback. Thank you so much for those kind words. We, we really appreciate that. It's um, really great. Yeah, thank you, Marlies. And I see Darby's also got his hand up uh, there, Omri. Hey, Darby, how's it? Um, yeah, I might just add uh, that I'm not merely using it for a, for a signal as such, but I piggyback on your guys' uh, 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 take profits to sculpt in between. So I've sculpted up and down in between and, until it's finished. So that's how I trade it. Very nice. Thanks. So you get three signals for the price of one. That's basically what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have it. You know, you can see where the resistance points is faster. I just draw lines when you pull it up and sculpt in between. Works nice. Wonderful, wonderful. We won't up your subs. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, thanks, so that's Tom. great. We really appreciate that. It's great, man. So I don't and know you, if you were to, yeah, we'll wait for the Q&A at the, at the end. So ladies and gents, I see there are a few questions. Sorry, Amri, there are a few questions in the chat. Um, we will get to those at the Q&A right at the end. Super, yes. We will address every single question. Yeah, we will definitely um, address all of those. Do we have any other existing members that maybe have a contribution? You're very welcome. Um, yeah, anybody else who's taken the source uh, signals um, over the last little while that would like to give some feedback as to how they found it, um, any of those who are in attendance here today, by all means, uh, jump in. Super. Um, what we will do now is um, head over to Shaul, um, my colleague, he will explain to you um, when you receive a signal, just maybe uh, our logic behind it. Um, but yeah, I will hand over to him. And there you go, Shaw. It's all yours. Thank you, Elmeri. And yeah, welcome to everybody here. Nice to have you all on the call. I'll try my best to just run through a couple of these charts. Um, I'm not going to get too much into technical stuff. I just want to explain a bit more um, what you should expect from the signal. Um, as you can see here on the screen, um, on the first block, um, you've got a falling wedge there. Uh, the signal was put out, and it is actually still a current active signal. Um, you'll see on the chart, there's a, a yellow line in the middle. Um, that is normally uh, our entry point, and you'll see it on the signal rules that we have on the top there. Um, if you read through that, it says... Um, it's not financial advice and the extra exit and entry points. Uh, that's obviously the yellow line is the entry point. And then we've got a couple of green lines, which is your take profit points. And then we have the uh, pink line at the bottom, which is your stop loss normally. We try to put it at strategic places. Uh, normally, when you get a signal and you see that um, the, the signal hasn't 
gone into the entry zone yet, uh, we would advise you not to enter yet. Uh, we specifically put it there because that is normally a point where we expect a high high or something to happen. And that's where we would want you to enter. So enter only when you reach that point over there. Um, and from there on, you can trade it up. And then you'll see you've got to take profit points. There's normally one, two, three. There could be a fourth one, depending on the signal, what, what, the, what this um, technical analysis allows us on the signal. Because we only have a two to 48 hour window, um, yeah, it's difficult to get much or very high profits um, on the coins, but sometimes we are lucky and they do run you know, quite fast. And then we, we end up getting the take profit threes and fours. Um, your stop loss at the bottom, that's where your pink line is. Uh, we normally put it uh, also normally under the, the last weeks. Um, once again, because we got the short terms that we actually have to work with, it's difficult for us to put a, a stop loss that is uh, 10 or 12% or 8% um, uh, below the entry. So I, I will explain something more about that um, shortly. Um, so we try to, to have the stop losses as, as um, tight as possible. And sometimes um, it bites us. Uh, it has in the last day or two. Uh, but I'll explain about that also. Um, yeah, so the, as you can see on the cover signal, we've got a falling wedge there. Um, it broke our, our um, diagonal trend line um, going down there. Uh, we waited for the retest and um, obviously after that, we want you to enter. Um, I think this signal is currently about halfway between the entry and take profit. So it's going well so far. And then at the bottom, we've got the BNX trade uh, that played out a couple of days ago. Um, as you can see, we had a beautiful cup and handle pattern there. And that's where we, uh, at that orange uh, line, is where we um, put out the signal. And from there on, you can see it hit the entry, entry level. And from there on, it it entry one, I'll take profit one, two, and three. Now, on Shol, one, sorry, Shol, yeah. I'm going to be very rude. Sorry. Um, Elmery, okay. would you mind? Uh, there are a few people in the waiting room. Uh, would you be able to give mm. them access so they can join us? Um, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you, John. Apologies. Um, on this specific one, you can see it has hit uh, the third take profit uh, point. But I want you guys just to think about this, or when you do trade these signals, um, once at least hit the take profit uh, point, um, especially the, the last ones, um, don't always just merely exit the trade. Um, I would maybe advise, you know, take a trade, uh, um, put your stop loss very, very tight on your, on your uh, take profit point. Sometimes they do run further and you can actually get a couple of more percentages out of those trades. So just keep it in mind when you when you have time and you can can watch the charts. Um, see if it does run up and and just see if you can gain some more percentages out of it as, as much as you can. All right, uh, if you could just go to the next slide, Amory. Um, there we are at LSK and and five. Oh, yeah. okay, thank you. All right, um, these two trades. Um, is the ones I was going to talk about uh, that both are so still active. Um, I think UNFA is currently between take profit two and three. Um, what has happened with these signals, and I just want you guys to be aware of it. Um, when we put the entry uh, level out, it does happen and has happened in the pause as well that you, you hit your entry and they sometimes just weak into the entry and then they go back down to the stop loss area to test that area again. And that's why I say sometimes it bites us because, our, because we don't want to put our stop losses um, down too far. They sometimes just go down and, and hit our stop loss, but it doesn't actually break the stop loss. It just wicks into the stop loss. So I want you guys to be aware of that. Um, when it does happen, don't don't exit the trade um, at that moment. Um, have a look at the trade. Um, if you have set it up, I know it will wick you out, um, but you can re-enter the trade. Sometimes if you just assess it for a while, 
you'll see um, the next candle will probably be a green candle and then you can actually just enter the trade again and, and run it up. Shaul, sorry, will you unmute yourself quickly? I muted you by accident. Oh, there you go. Thank there you, you go. <laughs> I muted all and then I muted you as well. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, I don't know exactly where you muted me, but yeah, anyway, the, um, if they do um, eat the stop loss and it's just a week, um, just enter the trade again and, and run it up because mostly they will go up. You know, we know sometimes uh, if, if it doesn't play out in our um, two to 48 hour period, normally they will play out, you know, especially if you look at this LSK and the, the unfair uh, signals, you know, the, the amount of, um, if you look to the left, the, the red candles that was coming down, that created huge imbalance zones. So we know that trade will play out eventually. If it doesn't play out in the 48 hours, it will play out maybe in a couple of days, you know, five days, six days or whatever, but they do tend to go back to those areas. So uh, just something to be aware of. Um, we will try to put our stop losses as far down as possible, um, but yeah, just be aware of it. Like I think um, even, yeah, um, is it a, one of these trades I saw afterwards, it actually the reversal pattern that it made was actually beautiful. So it will, I think it was an unfight. It, we definitely know it will, will go up from, from there on. Um, another, maybe just a tip, um, if you can watch your charts, um, if you're in the position to do it, um, maybe especially in a stop loss, um, just to uh, just take, uh, put a, 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 um, a alert, you know, the stop loss alerts on, on your trading view um, that you can be notified of the alert. And before it just wicks you out, uh, that you can just assess your situation. If you see it, okay, it doesn't look good, then you can actually ex exit the trade. Uh, but that's on your own discretion. You can, you can decide uh, whether you want to do that or not. But sometimes it helps, you know, especially just for that, little week down and it goes up again that it doesn't just wick it out for, for, no, for no reason at all. Um, yeah, we've also got, as you can see, the tabs there on the left-hand side, uh, that's price tags. Um, that is just to make the, that's exactly where the lines are. So that just helps to, to make it more visual for you guys to um, see. Uh, sometimes it might happen that they don't, they're not exactly, let's say there's, it says 2.075 on the line there. On the right hand side on that green tab, it may might say 2.074, 2.076. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, just work on the on the white tabs that, that you have there. Um, and that should make your life easy enough. Um, yeah, and regarding the TA or the uh, what we see on the charts, we normally look for breakout trades, uh, we look for W patterns, we look for cup and handle patterns or good horizontal support zones. Uh, to enter the trade. So that's more or less the kind of things we're looking for. And once we see something like that playing out, um, we can, we will enter the trade. Also, just be aware that sometimes uh, if you see there's not a trade coming out in a day or two, sometimes you are waiting just to see what Bitcoin is doing, um, especially when it's on an area that we know there's, there's resistance. Uh, we might want to wait, wait a while for just to see what Bitcoin is doing. Is it breaking the resistance? Um, is it uh, coming down? Does it get rejected? Then we will rather wait for, the, um, for that to play out before we enter into new trades. So just be aware of, that, aware of that if you don't see a signal coming out every day. We try to put out about two, at least two, maybe three a day. Um, but if you don't for a day or two get any signals, it's not that we forgot about you, but sometimes you're just waiting for the market to settle. And we have also in the past um, tried to put out trades while the market's not really um, conducive to do a trade, but, uh, and then it comes back to bite you. Yeah, we can't, we're not perfect in all senses. We do eat stop losses and everything, but luckily our take profits is more than our stop losses at this stage. So I think we, we managed in well at this stage. Thank you. That's all from me. Back to you, Elmery. 
Super. Uh, are we going to open up for questions and answers now? Yeah. I think and, so, yeah. and there is there is one there already. Well done. Uh, nicely done there. Um, so yeah, very just quickly elaborate on that. Um, that was Stephen's question. Uh, in terms of, are there plans, Omri and Charles, in terms of making or creating a telegram group for salsa signals uh, so that, you know, can check on the, the mood of the market and in terms of uh, the rest of the sentiment within those who are uh, subscribers? Um, I we think, have... yeah, sorry, Omri, I think we, um, we're not going to create the extra uh, telegram channel at this stage. We're only going to stick with what we have. Uh, but we are however, um, creating it. Uh, we have actually just recently opened a Twitter channel. Um, we will, once everything is active, we will um, put that in a channel and we will, uh, I think that is the, the area where we, we can engage a little bit more. But um, for now, we won't have a chat channel um, for that, just only the signals channel. And I don't know if you want to add to that, uh, Elmeri. Yeah, uh, we, we just don't have the manpower right now to um, be available 24-7 in, in a chat room. So, so instead of providing an inferior type of service, we, we have decided to hold off on that until there is a need. And clearly, um, looking at the requests in the chat, um, there is a need. Um, clearly, you guys want a chat room. Um, so, so yes, we, we will certainly consider it. Um, and, and if you can just at this point have grace that they will not be a support technician 24 seven. It's not like huddle knots that, where there always is a trainer and somebody available immediately to respond to you. But it's a nice place to, at least to chat to each other. Um, there there um, will be rules that I can assure you now if people start getting sour and negative, we will restrict them. Um, because we, we need a positive vibe and, and we are trying our best. If, if a signal hits a stop loss, it's not because we don't know what we're doing. It's just simply the market is unpredictable sometimes. But yes, we, we are considering it. Cool. Then just to follow up on Stephen's question, and I see you do have it in that slide over there. Um, Omri, if you'd like to uh, broach that to to topic. Yes. Um, the, the quickest way is log a ticket in um, Bitcoin, uh, Trend the forecast um, in the help center. That's the quickest way to, to get a direct response. Um, Shal and me, we don't mind if you direct message us in Telegram. I'm Elmery DP. I don't know, Shal, what's your handle? It's at Shal VDP 99. There you go. Shal is spelled C H A R L. Just say it is at Shal VDP 99. V. V. Fundenberg. It is. It is in the uh, Zoom chat as well, ladies and gents. V. I think so. Yeah. Nine nine. Nine nine. nine, nine yeah. <laughs> there you go. And I'm at Elmery. Look at that. Okay. So that's great. Okay. And then so, um, I see there are a few hands as well, which I'll get to now. Genevieve's name, Francois. Um, and then there's, well, there was a, um, a question from Petro uh, around what candles do you guys use um, in your charts? The signal charts, uh, we use normal candles. Shall go ahead? Yeah, no, same with me. We use normal candles. I don't use the Icon Ashy candles for, for charting. Uh, and uh, is there a reason for that? You know, the, a normal candle just tells you more about the story of the market. Um, if you look at this chart, for instance, the carver signal that Shaul explained earlier, if, if you change that, uh, look at here where the trend turned right there on the, on the pink line, just keep in your mind what it looks like now with normal candles. And the moment you change it to Hiken, um, only after the second and third candle you pick up re the reversal while here where the trees the bottom forms it's giving you two red candles so if you are following Haikanashi and you haven't yet seen that green string you don't know is the next one going to be further down to the red further down to the red like for instance there the, obviously they went further down and that candle will be red on the normal chart as well but yeah the second candle 
is showing you I'm turning green. It's a reversal trend. While with Heikinashi, you would have seen that only three candles down the line. Mm. And, and that's a personal preference. Um, for some people, they feel safer with the trend following Heiken. Um, for me, and like Charles said, for him, the normal candles work better. Perfect. Lovely. Then uh, just on that note, um, and I'll assume I'll get your question now shortly as well, but uh, Mr. Kleinans or GF Kleinans, uh, when following the salsa signals, what is the recommended time frame for us to use in TradingView? Uh, so you the want to take that? Charts are, um, yeah, we normally post them on a one hour chart. So I think follow them on a one hour. We will also, we do look at, look at different um, time zones before we uh, put out the signals, but they will normally be done in one hour. We look at four hours as well, but um, they will be posted in one hour. Just okay. because it's a shorter time frame that we um, want the signals to play out as well. So yeah, we refer to a little bit smaller than the four hours. Perfect. Okay, great. I hope uh, GF Klein answered, answered your question. And then there's a new member to the DEN who joined yesterday. Uh, Masum uh, joined the DEN and subscribed to Hot and Lots. Um, I am under the impression has not done the Hot and Lots course, but the question is, can anyone guide me how to take a trade based on the one minute, 15 minutes and one hour theta cross? Elmeri. Yes. Um... So, sorry, I missed the name. So I want to call you by uh, your name, but I missed That would be Masum. Masum. Yes, we chatted yesterday on Telegram as well. Um, for, for those questions, you will have to contact Carla directly from the Hoddle Knots. Remember, we are the Salsa Signals team. Hoddle Knots has got a, a separate support group. So to explain the theta cross and how to follow the trend in terms of getting in, getting out. That's, that's um, a lot of technical coaching on its own. Okay, and um, can you guys hear me? Shaw, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, so so, so um, if you don't mind, um, rather contact them in the lodge or the um, den and um, like I say, the, the, the trainers in, in the Hoddle Now Den will be able to, to assist you in explaining the theta cross. If you go to the Academy for Hoddle Knots, um, obviously there are a lot of rapid fire chain, uh, trainings of that as well. But, but for the purpose of this chat, if you don't mind that we, we stick to the Salsa Signals content, will that be okay? So I'm just going to do a slight tangent on that very quickly Omring. um most mm -hmm. of us who are most of us who are in the den um we've gone through the hot and lots course which is a, a truly life-changing um experience in terms of understanding markets from a scalping perspective and you have a, a greater understanding of theta crosses and time frames and, and the bigger picture so masum and for those who haven't quite yet done it um if you wouldn't mind reaching out to hello at hodlnots.com um, because they will not have access to the lodge if you are not a certified member in terms of those RFTs and those further teachings. Um, I'll drop the R, I'll drop the address now in that chat. Super, thanks, John. That's and then, help. yeah, no, listen, it is it really gives you great perspective. Be able to really utilize these salsa signals better um, by understanding the fundamentals, um, and that is not just a biased opinion, um, but, but an educated one. So on no, that note- sure. you've, got, you've got a responsibility to upskill yourself in terms of technical analysis. You don't need to become a pro, but know the basics, know what support is, what's the resistance, what is a re good reverse signal. That, that's very, very basic. Um, Agreed, but also be able to look right. at these signals as well and un understand that if the market does turn, be able to understand what it's doing on the different time frames as well. Um, and yes. again, using indicators, not just your great guidance around these signals, but have an understanding of what it really means. Um, it, helps, it, it does indeed. Nice. All right, so. Uh, yes. uh, play, would mind just, um, sorry, would you mind just muting yourself there very quickly? Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Omri. Um, then uh, in terms of, uh, we've got one or two other more questions in the chat, um, but sorry, Genevieve, you've had your hand up for ages. Would you mind unmuting yourself and uh, presenting your question? Hi guys, good afternoon. Hey Genevieve, um, good to have you. <laughs> thank you very much. So I've been following the signals for the past month or so, 
And I must be honest, I am struggling a little bit. I, I, I think I overanalyze very often before I, I get into the trade because as with everybody, I don't like losing money. Um, so just to take LSK for an example, I mean, I've been watching it since the, the um, signal came through and it's entered the buy zone like two or three times, but it just doesn't look to me like it's going to go up. So like, I wonder at what point you guys, like how long do we let it run? Because like Charles was saying, sometimes it does play out and it might only be, you know, after the next retrace and then it goes up. But, it's, you know, I, I just, I wonder if you guys, how often will you actually publish something? I've um, seen one or two ret recalls and say, okay, this one's definitely not happened, but that's generally after it's hit the stop loss. I, um, if I can answer that, on specifically on LSK, if you look at the chart now in a one hour, mm. um, you'll actually see that it's gone through the entry um, zone and it's mm. actually busy forming a bull flag. So I'm actually quite positive this um, trade will, will go up, up higher. So can I ask a quick question then with, with no. indicators? Like I, I look a lot at MACD and stochastic um, versus RSI. Yeah. And I mean, like that looks like it's pointing down. <laughs> so, but, you're, but you're like, yes, this is going to go up. And I think no. maybe you obviously have a much greater technical analysis skills than I do, which I don't claim no, to have it's, any. Yeah, you know, things um, is sometimes difficult. But what I do a lot of the time, I jump to my four hour chart. Yeah. And um, if you go to the four hour chart, then that will uh, maybe change your thinking yes. a little bit. Yeah, and you can see the stock is still up. Yeah, exactly. And the stock artists is still going up. So I'm positive it will still play out. Um, but you know, the other markets are they they do turn on you sometimes. So we just got to manage it. But for now, I think this this trade is still good. Definitely. Do you mind if I ask one more question along the same no. line? So look, no looking problem. at the time frames, when before I look at the trade at all, when it comes out, I first go to the day graph and I see, look, are we up or are we down? Um, and I must say, when there's red candles and you guys have called the trade, obviously our trades are short term. But I think yeah. like if there's three big red candles, I'm nervous to go into that trade because I think like, look, there's a good chance the next day is going to be red as well. But yet you yeah. guys often post posts. Um, is it because you focus on the one hour? Like it can still go up. Yeah, in hour? it is because um, you know. But we because it's shorter time frames. Um, you know, I will. Let's say I see a, a reversal pattern, which on a day mm -hmm. chart you won't see, but I see it on a, on a one hour chart, for instance, or I see, okay. a, you know, some sort of um, um, a pattern, you know, like a falling wedge or, or a pennant or something that tells me that this thing will go, go up. So I'm we're more focusing on the, on the shorter time frames than, than on the longer time frames. Okay, cool. Maybe that's so, the answer your question. No, it does. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Perfect. Thank you. And, and then uh, Sunay had a question. Uh, well, her hand is still raised. Uh, so Sunay, if you would like to ask a question, you may now. Thank you. Charles Elmery, hi. Thank you for having me. Hey, Good to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on the same as Genevieve, I'm, I might be over analyzing, but my question, firstly, I want to say this really fits my time frame. It's much better. It's the first time that I'm actually making some profit because of the time frame that I can Fantastic. do it yeah, and follow it. But, so thank you very much. I'm, I'm really a promoter of this product. Um, my question is, because of my huddle nature course as well, um, I tend to overanalyze. So when the entry point, the yellow entry point comes, usually I wait for the buy signal on the one hour as well. And the buy signal always comes later than the, oh, not always, but most of the times comes later than the entry point. So is it just more safe to wait or am I wasting some um, some percentage profit there. What would you suggest? Look, the rule of thumb is that um, you wait for the breakout and the retest usually. So try to form a trend line. I just want to make it wide so that you can see it clearer. The rule for a trend line is it has to touch three places at least. Um, so just um, play around a bit with this one. You've got a touch point there and 
there are three more in a row and there's a fourth one. So clearly there the signal is breaking out and the entry was right above. Remember the signal went out here at the orange line. And at that point it was below this line. So the rule is here, what we were looking for, wait for it to break this trend line. There was your break and the cattle must close outside the trend line. Then it's safe to enter. So don't enter before this candle closes. And if you have to rather wait for the next one also, and that also closes at the trend line. And then you are fairly safe that this thing is on its way out of up. Now you need to be careful okay. because you, you actually, once it's there where you were, were 3.26, you had sort of a responsibility to increase your, to raise your stop loss so that if it comes down again, you won't suffer that big loss, but you can't raise it that high. You must still keep this retest in mind because this signal will typically come and retest this um, trend line and then go back up. You understand? So, so in, in terms of that, accept um, up your stop loss, but bear in mind, it is allowed to come and retest the support. So yeah, rather your stop let your stop loss hit and enter again. When it comes here, you enter again. Like Darby said, okay. he writes them up and down, up and down, because that's typically what happens. It comes down to test support and then shoots up to take profits. You okay. were asking? And um, I was asking, I can't remember, it's fine, thank you. No, oh, no, no, no. What I was now, I remember the stop loss anyway that you guys put in is usually below the trend line to give it some space to come and retest that trend line. Yeah, you really need to give it the trade some breathing space, um, but you also need to be responsible. And when it reaches there, there's no need to lose all this profit from there mm -hmm. to the pink line. Change your stop loss. Yes. And if it comes ah. down to the pink line, then you enter again because these signals, they are, they are all still there. Those support and resistance lines, they are still there. They will go away. So it will go back there. Okay, thank you. Super. All right. Thank you very much for that, Sunay. And then, Francois, you've had your hand up for a while, and then we get to Sandra. Yes, thanks, guys. Uh, my question has been sort of answered. This is regarding trade management, guys. Um, if, if if all goes well and I enter the trade and it hits TP1, do I at that point sell 100% and re-enter? Uh, how do you guys do it? And the second part of my question is also, do I trail my stop losses up as the TP goes up? The previous TP becomes my, previous, my latest stop loss. Um, how, how do you guys recommend I go about it? Yeah, I think um, you are 100% correct uh, by trailing the stop losses. Uh, what you said is exactly true. Um, go, if you take profit one, go put your stop loss at, um, at entry level. That is 100% correct. Uh, regarding what type of profits to take, um, I think that will be, every trader is different. I don't think there's a 100% correct answer regarding that. Um, I would typically maybe uh, it depends. You know, the scalpers they will take profit, the full profit on a on a take profit one, and maybe wait for a retrace and then enter again and, and work it up and down. Um, other people will maybe uh, take fifty percent profit on take profit one, and then maybe another twenty five percent on take profit two, and another twenty five on take profit three. Um, you can do 50-50 on take profit one and two, and then maybe wait for a retrace and see if you can get that last leg up. It, there's different ways to do it. And I don't think any of, of, of us is the same in, in the way of trading and take profit. So it's really difficult to give an exact answer, but I think that's a sort of a decision that you must make. Now, in my opinion, um, take profit one obviously it's, gets it the most. So it's good to take a fair amount of profit there um, and take a little bit less on take profit two and, and the last little bit of take profit three. That's how I would uh, manage it. But it also depends if you can watch it, you know, uh, if you can, if you sit in front of a computer and you see it, see the take profit one, maybe goes a little bit up, but you see, okay, there's definitely a reversal coming. And if and you can do it, then you can exit the trade and wait for the, for the, um, 
the, the quantum retrace and then you can enter it up with either the same amount of money or um, whatever you feel fit at that moment will, will suit, suit your, your trade. I don't know, I, don't, I know it's not an exact answer, Francho, but I sort of hope that will guide you in a direction. Yeah, there are no exact answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then so just to touch on uh, Sandra's question was pretty much along those lines, uh, just in terms of how do you split your take profits? In other words, what percentage of your total trade do you take at each of the take profit points and then buying back in at TP1 after retracement and riding further to TP2 and three. Um, then, yeah, so Ellie's got a question. Um, thanks, Ellie. Um, please, can you confirm which time frame we should buy in on? Yeah, oh, that... It depends. depends. Um, obviously, uh, we we put the rules there. There's a zone, an entry zone at one comma five percent to either side of the yellow line. Um, but but the moment you hit that buy button, you want to be on the fifteen minute or the five minute, and in, in my opinion, because then you want to see um, what, what's the optimum point. You, you will not, unless you set your trade up in advance on something like three commas or coin panel, then it's a bot that will just enter when it reaches the entry price. But, but when you are physically looking at Binance and decide to buy, make sure that you're on the 15 or the five minute screen. The one minute screen is not going to make that big a difference in the spectrum of 48 hours. I mean, if it's 10 cents lower or 10 cents higher that you score, what difference that, does that make? Rather get into the trade and um, not allow it to run away from you. Sure, I don't know if you have anything to add there. Yeah, no, I think that's perfectly explained, yeah. All right, so Ellie says it makes sense. That's beautiful, great. Um, I don't think there are any other further questions in the chat. If I've missed anything, uh, you can shout at me in the chat room. Um, otherwise, pop it in there, raise your hand. Uh, speaking of raised hands, I think I saw Charlene's hand raised briefly. Charlene, did you have something to add? Hi there. Hi, everybody. Um, hey, Charlene, no, welcome. Like, <laughs> hi. I just want to say and give a big shout out, oh, so sorry, uh, to Almery and the team in Salsa Signals. Uh, I have followed your signals from day one, and I must say that... It is absolutely mind blowing to see your um, report in February stating that you have done 160%. And I can say on my portfolio that I set aside for this, I have done up to 130% in February alone. So wow. big shout out to you. Um, I, will, yeah, I, will definitely, I will definitely recommend your product to all around. And yes, we're going to grow this into a big product. Thanks so much for you and um, Shal. Thanks, man. Oh, Charlene, thanks Thank for you your support, Charlene. man, and the kind words. Thank cool. you. All right. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Charlene, and for the other testimonies as well from those who've been involved. Um, I see Stephen's got his hand up. Stephen, by all means, jump in. Hi John, thank you, and hi Almeri and Shaul. Um, hey, pretty new to the to the channel and uh, pretty new to trading, so please uh, just correct me if I'm if I'm going off track. But um, I, I I'm struggling to understand the 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 profit figures. Um, the three percent average per trade. Can you explain that to me as against the um, the hundred and sixty that you have? Thank you. What we, um, maybe in terms of the calculations, let me just get back to that screen quickly. Um, you see, there were 53 trades. So what we do is we simply divide that 165 by 53. And that means that if you took every single trade and you suffered the losses that were indicated on the chart, then you would still have made 3.38% profit at the end of the month. That's basically what we are saying, which while um, how you can interpret it, this is actually worst case scenario because um, many people, like I said, would have seen yeah with Carva, for, for example, at 3.30, okay, it's starting to turn and maybe when that red candle forms or it got there at 3.289 and say, okay, I'm getting out. I will wait for, for, for a better re-entry. And then the stop loss wouldn't have been hit at 2.9. Or maybe it didn't go there. It already 
turned right after entry and you could see this thing is going south and you, you were, would be able to get out quicker if you were in front of your screen. But we go from a point of view that, okay, people are not in front of these screens all the time. So they didn't realize this thing is turning on them and it went right down to um, stop loss. So they lost that 6.3% instead of a person in front of his screen, which would have bailed out of the trade right there and only maybe lose 1% or 2%. Yeah. So worst case scenario is you have done 53 trades, every single signal that we sent out. Um, and then you would have made all those take profits one to fours, but you also would have hit those 18 stop losses. And but even if that happened, you would have made an average of 3.38% profit on, on your money at the end of the month. That, that's really worst case scenario. It could only be better if you managed your trades properly. Thank you, Almary. I think that uh, if I did learn one thing today, it's that uh, I need to learn a lot more. So I will definitely be doing Hey, that's great. You know, you know what, Stephen? <laughs> that's all of us. We learn all the time. That's why we have these webinars. We learn from each other. Um, I've learned today to up upskill my hosting techniques on Zoom. <laughs> so, um, and, and yeah, we learn from each other. And, and, and that's why we are here. Nobody has arrived. I mean, nobody can predict this market. If somebody tells you a coin is going to do 50% in 12 hours, they've got a crystal ball in front of them and they're sucking a bunch of garbage out of their thumbs. That's as simple as that. Um, we try <laughs> our best. We read the chart to the best of our abilities with all the indicators to our disposal. And, and we give the optimum signals or setups for you. But, but it can go wrong. We are humans. And, and the market is not a human. He's a something crazy. Just goes <laughs> any direction he wants. Well, sometimes we think the market's drunk. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <Yes. any, laughs> Sorry, just going back to um, Ellie's got another question. Um, and then in turn, and then Tertius as well. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Marlies, for that affirmation of the course and Gustav as well. Um, so Ellie's question is, do we set the stop loss and take profit on the same time frame that we buy in on? Yes. I think that will depend, but yeah, in general, I think it's true, but uh, the stop loss stays the same irrespective of the time frame you, you are in, uh, but you can, you can manage it. You know, if you are actually in front of your computer, you can manage it and see, okay, it looks like it's maybe busy turning. Let's just hang on a bit before we exit the trade, or you know, then you can make that kind of decisions. Yeah. So um, definitely, yeah, I would say you can jump between time frames if it suits you. Look, I think the reason people join a signal channel is the comfort or the security to have somebody that did evaluate the setup and validated all the pros and cons and say, okay, these are your entry points, your stop loss and your take profit points. And then you want to sit back and relax. All we're asking is don't relax 100% and blame us if it goes wrong. Just keep an eye on the trade in the meantime. So that if, if the market dumps, get out, wait for a better entry or, or manage it in that sense. But um, yeah, to answer, answer your question, when you receive the signal, because you have paid for it after all, use what we give you, and from there on, um, modify it to your own discretion. Yeah, I think that's uh, true. And I just want to add to what Amri says there. Um, you know, sometimes during the course of the day, then you see, okay, Bitcoin is now turning down and things just really not looking bad. Um, and if, if you can see it, then, then exit, you know, but from our point of view, I can't now quickly, I can, we can, if we see it's really going to go bad, we might tell you to exit the trades. But if it's like a 50-50 uh, situation, um, I don't want to just go change the stop losses quickly or, um, you know, tell you what to do. We'll manage it as we go along. And on the channel itself as well, if we see things is going horribly wrong, we will try to advise you accordingly. But we won't try that. That's actually what I'm trying to say. We won't suddenly change the, the trade setups just to suit ourselves or to, um, uh, uh, to, we will only do it to minimize the risk. So we will try to give you enough notice, you know, to, um, to raise the stop loss or do this or that, to just give you enough notice. I won't do it on the minutes and say, 
okay, quickly put the stop loss up and um, then we know it's going to hit and then we only claim 1% uh, loss instead of 5% loss. That's, you know, if you try, if, uh, I hope I'm explaining it in a way that you can understand it. Um, so we, we will take the, you know, if there's a 4% loss, we will take the, you know, um, and then we will manage it accordingly and put out new trades and try to make it up. But if you do see the market change, um, you know, get out of the trade, if you're not comfortable with it, um, and let's rather reassess and re enter. If you see it's come down, it hasn't hit lots, a stop loss and it's going up to the entry zone, then you can enter the trade again. But at least you you've, um, haven't taken the full loss on, on the trade as well. We, as on the signal of our part, if it does hit stop loss, then we will obviously say we have, we have hit 5% or 4% or whatever, but you could have, could have prevented it maybe on your side. Yes, there's a thin line you must remember, and that's yeah. where our experience can help you. Because we have been in the business for some time, we, we, we don't trade on our emotions anymore. We trade, if the technical indicators tell us the market is dumping or it's turning, the signal has been invalidated, then we will give the call that the, the signal is invalidated or raise your stop loss or whatever. It's not because our emotions get the better of us and say, oh, what's the moment? It's going up, it's going down, must I in, must I out? We pass that. And, and maybe in that sense, we can assist you because a, a new trader is not there. You still trade uh, or, or, or very much covered by your emotions. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we always make sure that we follow our indicators and have our stop loss. So we know that we're fine. Just one quick uh, question there from Tarshis and uh, just regarding take profit four, um, do those profit values going back to obviously your, your signals and, and what you're calling there, do those profit values assume that you are allowing the, tra the trades to ride all the way through take profit four, well, those that it does reach? Well, you need to take profit on the way, that's for sure. You can't wait for take profit four because that's the riskiest section of the trade. I mean, if, if you can make 5% year a TP1, take it. And then re-enter when it hits the yellow line again. And every time it hits a profit line, take all of your profit. And when you re-enter, just re-enter with your capital. Um, you can decide you want to compound or you want to um, just trade with your capital. For me, um, the higher it goes up, the less my capital. I'm, I'm not giving up my profit for, for the higher targets, but it's, it's a personal preference. Well, I see Stephen Hans. Stephen yeah, Stephen's hand was up from earlier, but uh, Stephen, Mr. Bodwell, if you that. have another, if you have another question, you're more than welcome to ask. Thank you very much. Um, oh. Other than that, I think we've covered everybody's questions in the chat as well as those raised hands. But again, if people want to reach out, they know now how to. Um, but Joe, other than that, thank you very much, Shaul and Almery. Yeah, we've done just you, about Joe. an hour. And just for the benefit of the people who tuned in later, I just want to go through this very, very quickly. So um, we are the leading analysts. We've got a team of trainers that assist us. If you want to join us, you can go to the bitcointav.com website and just search for the Salsa Signals product. Purchase it. You will receive this email that directs you to the bot and you will click um, forward slash start. Um, we'll be joined to the Salsa Signals Telegram group. And um, that's it. Your signals, um, the signals you receive will look like that. Um, entry, take profit and stop loss points. And if possible, just an illustration of our thinking. Where did we get the signal? And, and yeah. That, that, that is us, and we really, really thank you for joining us this afternoon. And my sincere apologies to Carlos again for not having the transcripts. I know he can't hear me, but I'm so sorry. I will figure this out. We will. Thank we you will. Guys. We will make a plan for Carlos. <laughs> we will. We'll chat to you afterwards. But again, ladies and gents, thank you for your time. And if you want a deeper understanding on what all of these technical indicators and so forth mean, and you haven't done the Hot and Lots course, go check it out also on BTAF and hello at hotandlots.com. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye you guys. very much, buddy. Thank you, yes. John. Bye-bye.